Hello and welcome to Chairside Live. I'm your host, Megan Strong. In today's show, Dr. Anna Maria Murashan has an exciting case for us. She's talking about the use of minimally invasive orthodontics to correct a crossbite situation. This will allow for successful, long-lasting, three-unit fixed bridge restoration. So let's see how Dr. Murashan treats this patient with multiple procedures and products ending with the final obsidian pressed metal restoration. Over to you, Dr. Murashan. The case I'm going to present today belongs to a 48-year-old male patient. He presented with two concerns. One was the aesthetic appearance of his old PFM bridge. The other was the position of the lower premolar that was biting outside of his upper teeth. My clinical and radiographic examination confirm that he has good periodontal health, a class one malocclusion with space deficiency and crowding in the lower arch. We can see here a unilateral cross bite created by the labialized version of number 21. Upon examination, it was determined that the existing 11 to 13 PFM bridge had defective margins and lacked proper tooth contour and occlusion morphology. I wanted to provide the patient with a short and aesthetically appealing treatment plan. First, I proposed a conservative orthodontic treatment offered by Invisalign Express, followed by replacement of the old PFM bridge with a new obsidian pressed to metal restoration. For this case, I chose obsidian ceramic to be used to press over metal because of its unmatched strength above all other ceramic options. The ceramics I utilized in the past average only 100 megapascals in strength compared to obsidian ceramics, which averaged 397 megapascals. After assessing that the patient is a good candidate for Invisalign Express treatment, online forms were completed and a series of records were compiled and submitted to the lab. As shown here, I requested an Invisalign Express treatment of five aligners or less on a single arch. My goal was to move tooth number 21 exclusively out of cross bite and into an ideal arch position using clear plastic eyeliners with slight to no amount of interproximal reduction. Invisalign responded with an online digital treatment proposal, as shown here, detailing the stages from the beginning of the malocclusion to the finished result with a more idealized position for number 21. This is a clean check simulation of the treatment plan that I can view, adjust, and approve before ordering the aligners to be fabricated. When viewing the Invisalign clean check models, we can see that the upper teeth also seem to move at stage one. This is not the case, however. This is a false movement of the upper teeth that gives an answer for aesthetic during active treatment. A minimum of 0.4 millimeters of interproximal reduction will be needed mesial and distal of number 21 in order to facilitate the movement of this single tooth and none other. From this occlusal view, we can see that a minimum of five aligners worn for a two-week time period was all that was necessary to complete the movements before restorative treatment could be started. After I have the exact movements of the tooth mapped out on a 3D virtual model, I call the patient to the office to preview and accept his new smile. My RDA will explain the initial steps of Invisalign to him, how long the treatment will take, then virtually demonstrated the movements with the aid of Invisalign's animated models. After Invisalign Express treatment was completed, the patient was ready for the prosthetic work. I began by cutting off the old PFM, making vertical cuts through the porcelain using a zircator diamond burr from Golden Dental, then follow with a carbide burr from Kerr to cut the metal substructure. For ease of removal, I forced open the vertical slit with a Christensen crown remover. After the old restoration was removed, I evaluated the integrity of the preparation and performed the removal of cement. Additional cleaning and reshaping was done with a round-ended taper diamond burr. 
I didn't have to do a lot of reduction, but I wanted to place the preparation finish line more apically. To control the bleeding before taking the impression, I placed Viscostat Clear from Ultradent. Tissue retraction was provided utilizing the dual cord technique. I first placed a Ultra Pack 00 cord from Ultradent into the sulcus, followed by a size 1 for the top cord. To provide additional pressure to the gingiva and help with hemostasis, I use anatomical camper caps for cold team. This technique permits the downward and outward movement of the free gingiva and after removal of the top cord allows space for the medium body capture impression material to flow into the sulcus and record the details of the finish line. To secure the final impression, I chose a full arch impression tray that my assistant filled with heavy body capture material. Once the impression material has set, the tray was removed from the patient's mouth to visualize the accuracy of the margins captured within the impression. At the final delivery appointment, the temporary is removed and the final obsidian press to metal bridge is tried in and margins are verified. Occlusion is checked for proper bite and function and then adjusted as needed. Note that in lateral excursion, the patient now has proper canine guidance with posterior disclusion. To prepare the intaglio surface for final cementation, Ivoclin is placed inside the restoration. The solution is agitated with a brush for 20 seconds, then rinsed and dried truly. After Relay X looting cement was loaded into the restoration, it was fully seated with finger pressure. To ensure that the bridge will remain stable in place, I have the patient bite on a cotton roll during the setting of the cement. To aid with cleanup, I chose to light cure for 5 seconds and then very carefully remove the excess cement. After the cement was completely set, the interproximal contacts were checked and superfloss was used to ensure no cement was left under the pontic. Here is a nice buckle view of the bridge after cementation. The colors are vibrant and warm and especially on bridges, I want the strongest material I can use. This particular bridge frame is made from laser sintered non-precious alloy. The fit is far superior to last wax cast technology. I need a bridge that can function for a long time and the last thing I want is for my patient to return with their restoration fractured. Note how the express option of Invisalign allowed me to correct the malalignment and gradually move number 21 into position, improving the arch form before restoring the bridge. The lower bicuspid is no longer pushed out of position and it is not interfering with proper bite and function. Note that after creating the spacing by slight interproximal reduction using a mosquito burr, there is significant amount of enamel still present mesial and distal of number 21. The success of this restorative treatment was achieved with conservative orthodontic treatment and was enhanced by a new obsidian bridge that gave the patient the smile he always wanted. Thank you for that, Dr. Murashan. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Chairside Live. On behalf of everyone here at Glywell Laboratories, we thank you for watching, and I'll meet you right back here next time.